Hey guys, welcome to a professional electro fitness course. Today, we're gonna learn the lesson number one, electro fitness foundations. Today, in lesson number one, we're gonna talk about the key foundations and concept to get the most out of electro fitness. Since I discovered the electro fitness technology, I immediately understood the great potential of transformation for the users. We will learn its functionality, benefits, handling of the device, keys to optimize the training, technical parameters used and a specific recommendation so that you can set up and manage an electrostimulation session for you or for any users among other things. Pay close attention to our first lesson because knowing the foundation is an absolute requirement to learn properly the advanced integral electrostimulation. I will guide you through this adventure, acquiring the maximum level of knowledge from 0 to 100. We will start first with the general foundations and then finish with the specific concept about the subject, which make you stand out and help you become an expert in the sector. I hope you enjoy it. What is electrofitness? Electrofitness or e-fitness, it is understood as the application of electrostimulation in the sports field also considered as sports electrostimulation applied to fitness. But what are the effects does the electrostimulation in the muscles? Sports electrostimulation cause involuntary muscle contraction by means of electrical impulses. We are going to look at different type of muscle contraction so that you can fully understand why sports electrostimulation is used. And now type of muscle contraction according to the origin of the contraction. Muscle contraction is achieved through the central nervous system. In other words, our brain and spinal cord are responsible for carrying the other contraction and activation to the muscle we want to activate. This activation can be voluntary or involuntary but always controlled by the central nervous system. Number one, voluntary muscle contractions. The central nervous system sends the signal through the motor's neurons. Imagine a row that allows you to access to the muscles. For muscle activation, this type of muscle contraction is controlled by the brain. Number two, involuntary muscle contraction. We achieve muscle activation or contraction without the need for the brain send activation command. This type of muscle contraction is controlled by the spinal cord. The muscle is the last responsible for muscle contraction and as such deserves extra attention. To begin with, it should be noted that there are three types of muscle. Smooth, striated and cardiac. We will focus on the striated muscle responsible for muscle contraction in movement process. A striated musculature is comprised of two types of tissues, skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle. In the striated muscle, we find three types of fibers. Red, which is in charge of a slow contraction, white, which is in charge of fast contractions, and mix, which is red plus white contractions. The following data should be taken into account for your training. Number one, the proportion of the fiber type in muscle is genetically determined. This means that the number or white or slow fiber it is already written. With training, we can choose to involve one type of another. In sports practice, it is important to set goals to focus our electrostimulation training on one type of fiber or another. Number three, it is important to highlight that 80% of advanced integral electrostimulation, the equipment has a common non-specific objective such as toning and weight loss. Number four, however, our type of training and parameters used must be aimed and stimulating the mixed fibers overall set or fast or slow fibers. And number five, training for a professional athlete requires customization of the parameters and type of training to simulate the fibers required in the specific type of activity. We understand muscle contraction physiology as the process by which muscles contract. The last group responsible for the entire process of muscle contraction is the muscle fibers. 
These muscle fibers contain other living structures that convert energy, ATP, into movement. In other words, the human body obtains the energy it needs to function by means of a molecule called ATP. It is the muscle fibers and their internal structure that are responsible for the process. But where does this energy come from? The energy it is obtained by breaking down the ATP molecule into other similar molecules such as ADP. But please don't get overwhelmed with so many new and technical terms because I just want you to understand them. Now we have finished lesson number one. I hope you like it and I hope to see you soon on the next lesson. In our lesson number two, we will see the benefits of the system in muscular tendinous vascular level besides learning the effect over body position. So please don't miss this out, sign here and let's go ahead and start this together.